We need to supply them with better artillery, but we also, frankly, should be giving them uh, not just helicopters, but fixed-wing aircraft that can go fast enough to take out the drones. And you don't need very sophisticated planes to do it. Uh, the Ukrainians uh, came to see me about it. You, you could do it with Spitfires. We don't make Spitfires anymore. But uh, you, you, you just need a plane that can go a few hundred miles an hour. If you can't get even that element of escalation, what on earth is going to happen in the depths of winter where they I mean, assuming it's a, if it's a cold winter in Europe where citizens are facing recession and they say, oh, for, why are we doing this? You know, we support Ukraine, but enough's enough. How do you keep populations in Europe on side? Well, you, 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 you come to very, very influential audiences in places like Lisbon, uh, and, and, you, and you, you try to get your message across. Because I agree with you, it's going to be, it's going to be a tough one. But I, I happen to think that the, uh, the Ukrainian resolve is being strengthened by the, the attack on their, on, their, on their infrastructure. I mean, remember what happened to London in the Blitz. Uh, it, it, it didn't lead to a collapse in morale. On the, on the contrary, uh, morale was stiffened by the, by the aerial bombardment. Do you take victory or success as being removal of Russia from Crimea? Look, you can't be more Ukrainian than the Ukrainians, right? I think that what Volodymyr Zelensky needs to achieve uh, at the minimum in order to have talks of any kind is to get the Russians out to the pre-February the 24th borders. After that, you can have a conversation. I think ultimately all there will be, there will be talks, but those talks can't begin, in my view, until the Ukrainians have restored their, their the sovereign territory pre-February the 24th. Now you're out of office, you can be indiscreet. Within I the... think I was always pretty indiscreet anyway. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't remember being applauded for my discretion whilst I was in office. In G7s, in G leaders' meetings, did you find different countries were, um, to quote a predecessor yeah, I mean, of a... your, don't go wobbly? This thing was a huge shock, right? We, we, uh, we were all taken... I mean, we could see the, the Russian battalion tactical groups massing, but different countries had very different perspectives. I mean, be in no doubt that the, the French were in, you know, were in denial right up to the last moment. The, the Germans, for all sorts of sound economic reasons, really didn't want it to, uh, you know, they were, they were I, I'll tell you a terrible thing. Uh, the German view was at one stage that if it were going to happen, which would be a disaster, then it were better for the whole thing to be over quickly and for Ukraine to, to fold. And uh, I couldn't support that. I, uh, you know, that, you know, I, I thought that was a disastrous uh, way of looking at it. But I can understand why they thought and felt as they, they did. I remember the Italians, again, massively dependent on, on, on Russian hydrocarbons, at one stage simply saying, you know, that they, uh, they would be unable to, to support the position we were taking. But then what happened was everybody, Germans, French, Italians, everybody, Joe Biden, saw that there was simply no option because you couldn't negotiate with this guy. That's the key point. That's where the logic all, all, all breaks down when people call for a, a negotiated solution. There is no deal. He's right. not offering one. He doesn't even want one. Which takes me to this. And, and, and Zelensky isn't in a position to do one. His people wouldn't let him.